Hey, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about data, about numbers. Well, not the kind of data and numbers I've talked about in other videos. This time it's data and numbers when it pertains to e-bike purchases and whether it's worth it. So I'm just going to take you back to about three and a half years ago when I got a desire. I had a strong desire to get an e-bike. Now, mind you, I had been wanting to get an e-bike probably for three years before that even. So like uh, five and a half years ago, but three and a half years ago, it seemed to strike me as a really good decision given that we had a newborn and we were needing to uh, commute back and forth to work and to drop her off at daycare. And it was a real pain in the butt to get on the train or to drive the car and park in a parking lot only to have to pull out the stroller, stroll them to their daycare, and then uh, fold up the stroller and stow it somewhere. It just really ended up taking a lot of time. And we found that it was really difficult to get anywhere on time because the, uh, the transportation options were really inconsistent. Things like uh, the Muni train system in San Francisco or driving, really you, you, you didn't know whether it was gonna take you 20 minutes or an hour and a half to get where you were going. So we often had to leave an hour and a half early just to make sure that we got to where we were going on time. Now with the e-bikes and, and with bicycling in general, I knew that it was a lot more consistent because before we had kids, all we did was bicycle. We rode our road bikes to work and I lived close enough at that time. This is like eight years ago, seven years ago, six years ago that it took me eight to 10 minutes to get to work every day and it was consistent. Now, I live a little bit further away now, and uh, at the time I was making this decision, I was living where I'm living now, and I discovered that it would take about 25 minutes on an e-bike to commute to work or to commute back. And let me just preface this by saying, like, yeah, I discovered a lot of data about it. I, I wrote it all down, and uh, the whole point of this video is that I wanted to share with you my analysis, which is a spreadsheet that I did and I took all the data out of the spreadsheet and put it into a nice presentation format that I can more easily share with you here. And so what I want to do is go over that with you and show you what, what the numbers look like. So the three options I was considering are one, uh, get a Benno boost and a load e-bike. The load is the one I have some other videos on it and I have a video on the Benno as well. Uh, they're both cargo bikes. The load is a front loader cargo bike. They're both electric. Um, they're both expensive. The uh, load was about $8,400 all in with taxes. And the Benno was about, well, let me see here. The Benno was uh, 4850 $4, dollars all in with tax. And that includes seats and and covers like I have a rain cover for the load and I have a, a seat on the on the Benno like a yep seat on the back. So that includes all of the extras that I've added on. They're expensive bikes. And like when you're looking at spending fourteen thousand dollars on bikes, you have to kind of take a step back and and wonder, is this actually worth it? Am I actually getting my money's worth? And that's what I did. And so I, I created this spreadsheet. And I found that the uh, monthly cost of driving was actually pretty significant as well. It was about $414. And if that, that's if you include gasoline, parking, and insurance. Now my insurance is pay by the mile. And, um, and so like I pay more the more I drive. However, I went ahead and included the insurance in all the columns because I already owned the car. And the reality is we still drive on the weekends and we still do some driving and $60 is kind of the nominal cost of, uh, that we, that we, uh, incur by just having insurance regardless of how much we drive. And we really don't drive very much even when we were commuting. Um, so it doesn't really add up to be that much more, uh, when you commute only five uh, or 10 miles a day. So yeah, 
So, but the cost of the e-bikes, if I if I spread it out over two years, was about six hundred and eleven dollars a month. And then the cost, of, and that includes the sixty dollars I have to pay for insurance. If you take that out, it's like five hundred and fifty dollars. And then the cost of a muni pass, like a like an all access pass at the time, was seventy dollars a month. Um, and so adding insurance, that was one hundred and thirty dollars a month because I had to pay the insurance no matter what. Now, the interesting thing that you'll find uh, looking at my data is that I also kind of figured out what the average commute times were. And I skewed it a little towards the uh, higher time because you have to account for that uh, for those times when it takes longer. But on, but sort of the, uh, the rule of thumb that I came up with was that for driving, I needed to allot 50 minutes of time. For riding an e-bike, I needed to allot 25 minutes of time. And for taking the Muni or the T-Line, I needed to allot 65 minutes of time. Uh, so uh, I tried to illustrate that a little bit better here by uh, showing you sort of like by showing you what the uh, what the in a bar chart sort of like how it compares. So for instance, you can see on the T line that although you're saving a lot of money taking the T line or Muni you have a lot longer commute time. And as we all know, time's money. Uh, you know, I work in a, in a profession where we get paid pretty well. So like, I'm not taking that into account, but definitely taking 60 minutes each way out of my day uh, was kind of a, a strain. And, 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 you know, that's not particularly useful time when I'm on the Muni. I could read, but like 60 minute chunk of time to read uh, with a lot of that being walking or waiting for the train. You know, I always had to look after my kids while we were on the train, so it wasn't particularly useful time. But that's 60 minutes each way. Uh, you can look at on the on the e-bikes where they're slightly more expensive than my car payment. I have a pretty inexpensive car, by the way, and maybe if you looked at a more expensive car, it would be different. But um, on the e-bikes, it was more expensive. We're talking around $600 a month, but then the commute times were around 25 minutes, which is a lot faster. So that's, that's less than an hour a day, whereas on the T-line, we're spending two hours a day. And driving, we were around, right around two hours uh, a day as well. I mean, it was close enough, but the expense was around $400. So driving sort of is this compromise solution. There were additional considerations, which I didn't really cover in my document here, but I just want to go into those real quick. Things like environmental impact and enjoyment of the experience. And I've covered those in some of my other videos, so I won't go too far into it, but suffice it to say, riding the e-bike is much more fun and enjoyable than driving or taking the T-Line, the Muni. And then also, uh, the environmental impact of the e-bikes is a, probably more comparable to the T-Line, but I would imagine it's even better because oftentimes uh, the Muni is not full. Now it's gonna run no matter what, and we could use that as sort of like an excuse and say it's gonna run no matter what, so you might as well use it. And yeah, that'd be valid. But the fact is like if in the long term, if we find that if, if everybody gets e-bikes and nobody rides the Muni, then uh, the Muni is going to go away. Same thing with a car. If you don't use your car, if you never use your car, even if you own it, eventually, you know, you're not going to get a new car. You're not going to put miles on it. Maybe you get rid of it and give it to someone else or sell it to someone else and they get to use it. And then they don't buy another car. So I think environmentally it's better as well. Now, um, so if you look at it on the whole, I think on balance, although you're spending more money on the e-bikes, and if you, and in reality, the way I'm spending it, I'm actually paying for a car and for the e-bikes. So uh, you can double that cost. But if you were making a decision between these three things, I think on balance, because of the time saved and this other factor, which is like an environmental factor, which I didn't graph, but if I had to, I would say that the, uh, if, we, if we added a green bar here, the e-bike bar would be very low uh, the T line bar would be low, and then the driving bar would be fairly high, uh, because the fossil fuels we burn, uh, 
just the amount of energy that is being burned driving a car because we're moving around a 3,500 pound vehicle is uh, it's a lot more than this 85 pound load or this T line, which is made to be efficient. It's electric, it's uh, on rails, it's moving around a large number of people at once, and it goes a lot slower in terms of acceleration. It's designed to be energy efficient. But I, th I honestly think probably the, the bike wins because overall, if you really consider things apples for apples, the bike is the only one that is point of use, that is point to point, that is super lightweight and is, is like a bare minimum of what you need. In addition, bicycles are super efficient even without the electric motor. So I think the bike wins. So some, so I wanted to like then address some questions beyond like, is an e-bike better than these other modes? Because I think it is. And go into like, what are the sort of gotchas when it comes to using an e-bike? One of those gotchas is what if we just don't use it? What if it's it turns out to be like not fun or painful even, or just not usable? That was a definite concern early on. Now, even though we rode our bikes every day for probably four years, my wife and I, while we were together and both commuting, we would ride our bikes every day without electric motors. But that was a shorter commute. It was only like a one or two mile commute, whereas now we have like a five to six mile commute. And I wanted to address that. My main argument there or, or reasoning is that the resale value of these bikes is incredibly good. So this is an example of a load 75 which is a uh, slightly more expensive than a Lowe's 60. And it's a 2019 model that's for sale right now. And it's selling for $7,500. Now we purchased our load for about $8,500 with all the accessories and same accessories they pretty much have here. Uh, ours has a lot more mileage on it. It's a, it has around 7,000 miles. And this one has 3,700, but you can see like, this bike is relatively the same price as when it was sold. So it's a thousand dollars, probably maybe $1,500 less. And it's been used for two years, two, two years now. So that's pretty good. Um, so I think that the resale value for these bikes is really good. And that's what I've heard across the board that like, for the most part, these bikes really uh, retain their resale value. And so, uh, that's a great uh, reason to not worry about if you don't use it. If you don't use it, you can sell it and you're not going to lose a lot of money, especially if you don't use it and you don't put any miles on it. It's relatively new. You're probably going to get the same that you paid for it, maybe even more. And here's why. These recent Mueller loads, for instance, take four months to get because they're shipped from Germany. I won't go into the environment impact of that. There is something to consider there. Like it's, basically shipped around the world. Um, but if you compare it to cars or even these trains, those are shipped around the world too. I mean, the train's only shipped once, so that probably saves a little bit of the environmental impact, but cars are shipped all the time. Um, but that being said, like it takes four months. And so uh, some people will pay a premium to not have to wait four months. So if you have a, a used e-bike, that somebody can buy from you right away at a small discount, they may, they may, they're, they're definitely going to pay it. You could even probably charge them the same amount as, as retail as for a new bike because they don't have to wait. So that's a, that's a good benefit and a reason why you don't have to worry about if you don't use it. The next concern was what if the bikes break? And in these cases, I had a two year warranty on both bikes. I've had them for three and a half years now and they haven't broken. So that's really awesome. Um, the only things I've had break are punctured tubes on my tires and it, it's relatively cheap. I think like $20 to replace a tube. So that wasn't a huge concern and it's happened a total of four times over the past three and a half years. And that's in the city of San Francisco. And if you know anything about the city, we have a lot of broken glass in the road and I've, that's been the cause of it every time. Oftentimes, actually, every time we've ever got we've ever gotten a flat, it was on a rainy day because of glass in the road, because something about rainy days and glass causes tires to puncture. Um, in addition, like the service plan, 
um, at my local e-bike retailer is pretty good. So you can get uh, a comprehensive service plan for $285 for one of these bikes that covers you for a year for all of your maintenance. So they'll tune your bike. They will uh, adjust things. They'll do a full tune and cleaning where they go through and grease everything and oil everything and, and find anything that needs to be replaced. And then you can get like a discount. I think it's 10% on anything that you buy. Uh, it's a really good deal. And I would recommend doing something like that. Honestly, like at this point, I've figured out how to maintain these bikes on my own. So I don't, I don't pay for that anymore because I, for instance, today I changed a uh, flat tire. It's the, the fourth flat tire we've ever gotten that we got during the rain uh, where my wife was riding over some glass in the rain and not her fault. She didn't see it, but I replaced that tire. It took me 15 minutes and it cost $20 for the tube. Um, the other consideration is when you need to replace those things like brake pads and tires, like, yeah, take that into account. It's relatively inexpensive. And with a maintenance plan, the, the labor is free. So you just pay for the parts. Um, okay, what about maintenance? What kinds of things are, are you going to have to do on an ongoing basis? One of those things is oiling your chain. That's probably the main thing you need to do. Oil your chain. So like once a month, you probably need to oil your chain. And then anytime you ride in the rain, you should oil your chain. That takes about five to 10 minutes. If you, once you get good at it, it's very easy. Um, you just lift up the back tire onto something. If you have a bike stand or if you uh, can just like tip the bike forward a little bit on the kickstands, then you basically dry off, uh, clean off your chain with some sort of solvent, like a chain cleaner solvent with a rag, then grab your oil, drip it on there while you're turning the chain, uh, drop, dry off any of the excess oil with a clean rag, and then you're good to go for a month. It takes about five to 10 minutes. Uh, another question was like, what if our work no longer allows us to commute? Like if we needed to move or we wanted to, our workplace move to a further location that we didn't want to commute on or a pandemic happens. And in that case, the resale value of the bike comes in, you can resale the bike. Uh, Fun fact, we bought this bike, these bikes exactly two years before the pandemic. So we were able to sort of achieve a lot of ROI before the pandemic hit. But the, tr the fact is we've actually ridden our bikes every day since our daycare reopened, which was about six months after the pandemic uh, started. And so we've essentially gotten even more value out of this bike over the last year uh, where we're still commuting and taking our daughter to work on the e-bike. I mean, not to work, but to daycare on the e-bike. Uh, another question we have is what about bicycle parking? And in our case, we found several garages that had bicycle parking. Uh, we found at least two garages that had a bike path down uh, on their vehicle ramp. So you could ride your bike directly to the cage because like with the load, it's pretty long. And even though you can fit it in an elevator, if you prop it up on, on its back wheel, it's not easy. And I, I did that a few times at my workplace. But when you have a ramp that goes down where the vehicles go down, it makes it super easy. You just ride your bike right to the bike cage. Uh, and this allowed us to ride directly into the cage. We didn't have to use any of the elevators or stairs. And for us, it was free because uh, my wife's workplace offered up uh, the bike garage for free for anybody who worked at her company. Uh, but I don't know if you have to pay for it at most places. Most places, uh, like her place didn't, didn't, there wasn't a way to get in there unless you were an employee of her company, but I'm sure you, there are plans and I don't know what they cost that would allow you to park your bike in a parking garage, but they're probably much less than what a car would cost for a parking garage plan. And in our case, we found that like parking garages were around $330 a month. I think bikes are going to be a lot less. I don't know, though. I should probably figure that out. But I don't, I don't need to know right now, so I'm not going to look into it. And really, I'm just going back to what I, for, for your benefit, to what we considered three and a half years ago. Uh, which leads to the next question, can you lock your bike outside? And for shorter periods during the day on a busy street, absolutely. And I do that all the time. If I'm going to a restaurant the grocery store, like Whole Foods, or even to a playground or a park, I'm totally comfortable parking it outside near where I am, locking it up. 
it, it's usually a busy area. So if somebody comes out there with a with a device to cut some kind of a angle grind, angle grind, angle grinder to cut my chain, we're gonna hear it. Somebody's gonna hear it. I haven't had any issues with that yet. Um, there were even a few days where I left my load locked outside of my downtown building, my downtown office building for an entire workday. And I was nervous about it. I was like, ah, oh, man, I don't want somebody to steal my bike. It would really ruin my week, my, my year. So I was checking on it frequently, looking out the window uh, of the building to see if it was there. And there weren't any issues with that, but it, it definitely would still make me nervous to leave it there all day. Um, I would not leave my bike locked outside at nighttime. I think that's too risky. It's uh, There just aren't enough people out and it gives someone the opportunity to come in with an angle grinder, cut your chain, take your bike. Uh, I did have one time during the day where I locked my bike up and somebody actually dug into the panniers that I had on the bike and stole my daughter's lunchbox, which was kind of funny. Uh, we just ended up getting a new lunchbox. It wasn't a big deal, but a little disturbing that somebody stole a kid's lunchbox. Um, so looking back, we purchased two bicycles in March of 2018. We rode them every day for two years. Uh, the pandemic started in March of 2020 and our commute became a thing of the past until six months later when my uh, kids daycare opened up and we needed to commute again. And we have been doing that. So um, and that's riding to work back home and then to work and back home again uh, because we have to drop them off and then pick them up. And uh there isn't really good parking uh, right now. In fact, a lot of other parents have been getting parking tickets from even in the loading zone when they go to pick up their kids. And that's like $200, $280 a pop uh, each time you get a parking ticket. So over those two years, uh, I think it was about, it was $611 a month if I amortize the uh, e-bikes over two years. And that would have been $414 to for the operating costs and parking costs of of the car and that's not including the car payment by the way um and that would be 197 dollars and 25 cents extra per month which adds up to about four thousand seven hundred dollars more spent operating but also purchasing the e-bikes because i didn't take into account the purchase cost of the car since i already owned it uh, and for 1,440 of that was spent on car insurance, regardless of how you look at it. Uh, the differential is still the same because um, I've taken into account for both the car and the e-bike. But for instance, if you didn't buy a, a car, uh, that cost would go away uh, for the e-bike. And, and then you're looking at a, at a smaller differential uh, that you're paying extra for the e-bike. Uh, but I kept my car. I think it's a good idea to have a car, an inexpensive fuel efficient car for emergencies or if you need to take long trips very often. For instance, I like to go fly fishing on the weekends. So it's now over a year and a half after the pandemic started. It feels a lot longer, if I'm honest. I feel like it was two years, but looking back, it's only been a year and a half. And I still use my e-bikes every day and we still get a kick out of them every time. So you know, I'm not even taking that into account. The fact that we don't just use these for commuting. We also use these bikes for, for our everyday life. We go grocery shopping on them and then we go to parks. We go for fun rides. We meet up with friends. They're really great for our everyday life. So I'm not even taking that into account. But overall, I would say it's definitely been worth it. I would advise you if you're considering an e-bike and you need to get someone else's buy-in to have a look at uh, the numbers to, you know, put together a, a spreadsheet for yourself and really evaluate what it's going to cost you and then what it's going to save you. For me, the time saving, the enjoyment, the consistency of always a 25 minute commute has really been worth it. The additional bonuses of enjoying my commute, being able to stop anywhere I want and get coffee or stop at a park on the way home and not worry about parking or traffic or tickets, that's been invaluable. And the fact that I now have these e-bikes, they're mine, 
and any benefits I get from them right now are just icing on the cake in terms of cost, in terms of ROI. That's amazing. And these bikes are really well built. Like I said, they haven't had any mechanical or electrical issues in the three and a half years I've owned them. Just punctured tires from glass on the road, which are easy to fix. Uh, need, I need to oil the chains. It's, that's really the only maintenance I've had to do. And uh, a, c- a couple of times I had to change the brake calipers. Uh, that's relatively cheap and my maintenance plan covers that. So it's been an awesome benefit and I highly recommend you get yourself some e-bikes, help save the environment a little bit, uh, enjoy your life more, spend more time with your kids, spend more time with your loved ones and see a lot more of the city or the place where you live. Anyways, that's, that's all for today and thanks for listening.